Right, so in this video, we will be looking at the process by which DNA replication occurs. So in DNA replication, the DNA is essentially making multiple copies of itself. So we're just looking at how oh, DNA make multiple copies of itself. So as we already know, DNA is double-stranded, right? The first process or the first thing that needs to happen is that we need to separate the DNA strands. So the DNA strands must be separated. Now all of the processes, all of the processes that occurs in DNA replication, it occurs by or with the assistance of enzymes. The enzymes are needed. We need to separate DNA strands. After the strands are separated, right? So any new DNA molecule we are making, it must be double stranded. So if we separate these two strands, right? So you would have a red one and a blue one. So that is when you separate both of the strands. Now when both of the strands are separated, that is not a new molecule of DNA. So this strand, for this one, we must synthesize a new strand, right? And for this strand, don't you? so this one was the original. This one is also an original. So we are going to synthesize a new strand, right, on the original. So at the end of the process, we are going to get back a double-stranded molecule of DNA. So notice you would, would have started with one molecule of DNA. Is the red and the blue. So that was the original DNA molecule. And we said the first thing we're going to do is separate them. So this was it. This strand. Right, so this is one of the original strand that was separated. And this is the next one. Now at the end of the process, you would have had a new strand onto this original one. And you would have a new strand on this original one. So what we are going to do now is look at how we get this new strand. The first step was to separate them. At the end of the process, you are going to have two new strands on each of the original DNA molecule. Now, when we speak of DNA replication, we say it is replicated in a semi-conservative manner. So, before we look at the actual process, let us look at why we say DNA is replicated in a semi conservative manner. You look at the color codes, right? This so called new DNA, so just a So this is a new DNA molecule. So that's DNA, and this is a next new DNA, right? Look at the new DNA here. It still has one, so of the two strands, one of them is from the original. So of the two strands, one over two, that's a half, right? Times it by a hundred. One over two times a hundred, that is, 50%. Down here, this original, this new DNA of the two strands, one of it, 
one out of the two is from the original. So the blue here represents in the blue from this original DNA molecule. So again, one over two times a hundred, that is 50%. So each time DNA replicates, the new DNA that is produced, it contains 50% of the original information, right? Or 50% of the information in the original DNA. So each time DNA is replicated, 50% of the information we can say genetic information in as we are talking about DNA so 50% of the genetic information is retained in the new DNA. Right, so when we say it is replicated semi conservatively, that is what we mean. Right, one strand is new and the other strand is from the original. All right, to make it a little clearer as well, I'm going to put some actual bases. So we're going to show some base pairing in the DNA. Right, so here we have our two strands of DNA. So if remember we said when it comes to base pairing in DNA, we say it, we say we do complementary base pairing. And if you can recall in DNA where you have an A it will base pair with T. And where you have C, it will base pair with G. So it's adenine with thymine and cytosine with guanine. So on this strand, down here, if you have A here, we should have T, E. We have G, that should be C. We have C, that should be G. I'm going to pause the video and you can try and complete it. All right, so you would have paused and tried to complete this DNA here. So this is how it would have looked. So in DNA, we have complementary base period. So you won't have T in the same positions on both of the strands. Always A to T and G with C. Remember, we're looking at the first thing that will happen is that the two strands will separate. So here we have the two strands separated. Right? Once they are separated, a new strand will be made. And all that will happen essentially is that the complementary bases will be attached to these original strands. Remember now, this is from the original DNA, and this is also from the original DNA. And we're going to make our new DNA here. And remember, the DNA must be anti-parallel with each other. The two strands must be anti-parallel. So if this end is five prime from the original, then this must be the three prime end for the new DNA. And out here would be the five prime end. And all we have to do again, complementary base. So where is that A? We put T. So it would be T, T, C, G, T, A, T, G, A, A, T, T. So this will be your new strand of DNA. Use a different color for the next one. So on this strand now, we're going to make a new DNA strand again. So 
here is three prime, the new strand, this will have to be the five prime end, and out here will be the three prime end. Again, where of a T, you put A, it's A, A, G, E, A, E, A, C, T, 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 E, G. All right, so as you can see, it, this is one molecule of DNA, a new one, and this is the second one. So this was the original, just one DNA. Right? And down here, we get two new DNA from this one. Now, semi-conservative, let us see if half the information All right, so let us check if 50% of the information is retained in this new DNA molecule. So this would have been the new strand. And the entire, and the two strand now is what make up the DNA molecule. So it is going to be 50-50 reason being, this strand is from your original DNA, and then this is a new strand, right? A completely new set of bases. Right? There's one new strand and one original strand. The same thing here. This was the original strand, and this one in block, that's your new strand. All right? So this is showing the semi conservative nature of DNA replication. Now we're going to look at the actual process of how DNA is replicated. As stated earlier, to start the DNA replication process, these two strands must be separated. You need to bear in mind that the two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds. So when you have like the A, T, right, and then this strand would have T, A, A, they are held together by hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds. So these broken lines represent hydrogen bonds. And by the way, if it's C and G, C, G pairs of triple bonds. So the AT are AT, two hydrogen bonds. And the GC, three hydrogen bonds. The GC base pairs are actually stronger than AT. If they ask you, GC has three hydrogen bonds and AT has two hydrogen bonds. Right? Are they form two hydrogen bonds? So the first thing we're going to do, so when we say we're going to separate the DNA strands, in order to do that, we have to break the hydrogen bonds. That is the hydrogen bonds that we're holding the two strands together. And so we're going to, if we break these hydrogen bonds, then the DNA strands are separated from each other. Now the enzyme that does that is helicase. And before helicase actually comes into place, so the DNA molecule we say it is super coiled, right? So to ease the tension a little, all right, at the cape level, we don't have to, to mention this enzyme. Cocoa isomerase. But we generally start it at helicase. So we say that helicase breaks the hydrogen bond. But topo isomerase is actually the first enzyme that comes into play. So the DNA is super coiled, right? So the copper isomerase, so it eases the tension on it or relaxes the, the molecule, right? Then helicase now will come in and break the hydrogen bonds. So this is just an additional info to tell you that it is topo isomerase that actually starts it first.
right? But to separate this trans, so copper isomer is, is not separating the trans. In the case, we're going to break the hydrogen bonds, right? So separating this trans, the hydrogen bonds has to be broken. Once that is accomplished, let us see where we go from there. So let us draw the two strands being separated. Okay, so we're ready to get started now on the process. So first to try and keep it simple or make it a little easier for you to understand, right? This process, think of it like an assembly line, right? So everything is happening at once, but some things are ahead. So to get the process started, right? We had mentioned, so DNA, the molecule is super curled, right? At the end, I'm going to draw some little symbols or boxes on the enzyme. So let us say, copper ice summaries is the one that would have been ahead, right? To so ease the tension. Now, heal case. I'm going to put heal on this circle here. This is going to, to represent heal case, all right? And remember, the purpose of helicase is to break the hydrogen bonds. Let me put in some hydrogen bonds. Let me use green. All right. So we would have hydrogen bonds holding the two strands together. So when I look at mothers of DNA, and you see these lines between the two strands, they are representing the hydrogen bonds. All right. So the nucleotides are not shown on this, the base pairing. But anyway, of the, of the lines, that would mean the hydrogen bonds between the bases. So it is also basically showing complementary base pairing. Because if these are hydrogen bonds, that means they would be connecting the bases. So what needs to happen for DNA to replicate? We need to separate the DNA strands, right? Notice I did not separate all of the strands at once. As I said, just imagine it as an assembly line. It's an ongoing process, right? So here the case go ahead and it breaks a portion of the hydrogen bonds. Once that happens, we are going to kickstart the process of DNA replication. As I said, it is controlled by several enzymes. In the case, go ahead and break the double bond. Once that happens, we are going to have the bases. Enough, right? So let me just put some the bases here. Let's say ATT, G, P, G, A, T. All right? That means this chunk would have the complementary base pair. So this would be T, this would be A. A, this would be C, that would be G, and A. And I could go on straight away. Now, first crucial piece of information that you should know. DNA is made, and another word for made is synthesized. The DNA is made in a five prime, three prime direction. Right? Bear this in mind. DNA is made in a five prime to three prime direction. The next thing you must remember, DNA strands run anti-parallel. each other. That means if one strand is going five to three, five prime to three prime, the next strand must be going three prime to five prime. If you have five to three, five prime, three prime, 
five prime, three prime. That is incorrect. So this is incorrect. This one is correct. So this is anti-parallel. This is parallel. Right? So their name must be made in a five prime to three prime direction, and they must run anti-parallel to each other. What you will realize right, before I get there, just bear this in mind. Let us continue. So these two strands are separated. As you know from earlier in the video, all that we need to do now to make the new strand is add complementary bases. So on this strand where I have an A, I would put a T. On this one where I have T, I would put A. A, T, T. This would be T, A, A. We're now making the new strand. As I said, everything is controlled by enzyme. So the enzyme that is going to add these Bases here is DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase three. Now before DNA polymerase can actually know where exactly to start, it needs a little help, All right? It needs a little help. And that help will come from the next enzyme, is primase, and primase is going to make an RNA primer. All right, so the primer, I'm going to put a little box here to represent the RNA primer. Let me choose next color. So this area, this is your primer. I'm not put it on this strand as yet. I will explain why. Um, just a second. It's going five to three. Right. I'm going to put the primer on this strand down here. All right, so that is my primer. A DNA replication does not start without your primer. They can pause the video and make these jettings as I speak. So first enzyme is here the case to break the hydrogen bonds. For DNA polymerase to come in and start adding the complementary bases, we need a primer. The primer is what is going to tell DNA polymerase that here is where you need to start adding your nucleotides, all right? Once the RNA primer is there now, then DNA polymerase can join. So I'm going to let what the RNA, let us say a triangle, all right? So this is, a, let me draw it a let me draw it bigger. So just say, uh, this is our this is DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase. Right? So remember, early cases up ahead, continuing continuing to break hydrogen bonds. Then DNA polymerase now is going to move along the DNA strand, right? It will move all the way from out here, right? So you have to just imagine it moving along the DNA. Now, as it is moving along the strand, it is going to add the complementary base. So when the DNA polymerase spots A, it knows that it should put a T. Remember, the strands are separated now, so don't pay attention to this strand up here. Pay attention to this one. So the polymerase is moving along this strand. So where it says T, where it says A, it will put T. When it gets to this T, it will put an A. As it moves along, it is adding the complementary bases. This would be G, T, T, A. And as you realize, what is, whatever is on this strand above is the exact thing you will be adding to 
the original strand. So if you notice, this original strand was a T. The new strand you are making, it has T. Where you have A. So you notice they are in line T, 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 A, A, G, G, C, C. So the new strand is basically the same as the original strand from the other original DNA. Right? So when the DNA polymerase reaches this point, helicase would have probably reached out here. But helicase would have probably reached about this point, right? Which means that the DNA in this region would have been opened up. Right? So, so let me just do this, right? And then this portion of the DNA would have opened up. Right? While this means Kyle. Let's do this. So remember, it's an ungrained process. It's not like all of the DNA opens up and then polymerase comes along. A portion of it is opened up. All right? So this portion where we open DNA to start DNA replication, it is called origin of replication. See? This chapter you kind of get a fork. We call it the replication fork. All right, so this chapter right here that we initially open up the DNA, that's your replication fork. All right. Now, as I showed you with this one, right? Let me use the pointer. All right, so for this strand, DNA, you put down the primer, DNA polymerase comes along, and it will just move along this strand and add the DNA to it until it reaches the end. So it will be one continuous process. Now, what direction is this strand running? If you look, you can say two ways you can say it, right? Since as we open up DNA from this direction, our replication fork is going in this direction, right? What you are going to say, the DNA is made, so DNA is made now five prime to three prime direction, right? Or we could say in the direction of the replication for let me just erase part of the board. The DNA made in the direction of the replication or so as you can see the dna is being opened up in this direction from left to right we start out here going in this direction Right? So, what are the implications of this? So, DNA is being made 5 prime to 3 prime, right? Which means that it actually they should not, they should have started it up here. So let me just switch around the numbers. Uh, and you will see why I'm doing this in a bit. So I'm going to make this with 3 prime up here, five prime. I'm switching these around. Right. Fine. So this would be three prime and down here would be five prime. So the new DNA that is being made, right? Remember, five prime to three prime. So if it is starting out here, wherever it is starting, that is the five prime end. Get a different thing. The new DNA, this would be the five prime end of your new DNA. And at this point, when it gets to out here, this would have been the 
three prime n. Remember, DNA runs anti-parallel to each other. So this trend, hold on, just clear some of the board. Right, so the focus is on this trend, which is currently running five prime to three prime. That's the blue one. DNA, as we said, is made in a five prime to three prime direction. The new strand started at the five prime end, you go out to the three prime end. And as you can see, it is anti parallel to this strand. Okay? So all DNA polymerase has to do is just move along the DNA and add the nucleotides until it reaches the end. There are no issues with this strand. Because there are no issues with this strand, once it starts, it goes to completion. This strand is replicated continuously. So this strand, this strand is replicated continuously. Right? Which strand is replicated continuously? This strand, this strand is running five prime to three prime. When I ask which strand is replicated continuously, I am not referring to the new strand. The new strand is being made, it is not being replicated. These two original strands, they are the ones that are going to be replicated. So when I say which strand is being replicated continuously, it is in reference to the original strands up here. Right? So of these two strands, the one that is being replicated continuously is the one that goes five prime to three prime. No. The next way that you could say it is the strand that runs three prime to five prime, but you have to add something to it. It is the one running three prime to five prime in the direction, the direction of the replication arc. So let me just explain that again. This trend here is running five prime to three prime. Now, if you look at how DNA is being replicated, it's for the in this example. So other examples, they could have opened up the DNA from this end. We are opening up the DNA from this end, which is the right hand side so we are moving from the right hand side from right to left now since it's a, since as we're moving from right to left which is that is the direction that is the direction of the replication arc this opening here opening going in that direction right that's the replication fork so we're moving from right let's do that right so we're moving from right, going across to the left. So since we are moving from right to left, it would mean that we are moving from three prime to five prime. But do not just say three prime to five prime, all right? Three prime to five prime in the direction of the replication fork. Otherwise, it would be five to three, all right? So you can say five to three because we're reading it from left to right. So it runs five to three and we stop here. But if you want to look at it from the direction in which DNA is being replicated, it is being replicated from this end. So it will be three prime to five prime in the direction of the replication for. 
Now, this trend, because it is replicated in a continuous manner, we're going to call it the leading strand. Now, all of these references are being made to the original strand of DNA. One of these strands are going to be called the leading strand, and one is going to be called the lagging strand. The one that is replicated continuously, that is your leading strand. Please do not look at this new strand here. All right, we are not making any reference to the new strand. This five to three, that is your original strand. But the leading strand is five to three. All right. If you mention three to five, you have to say in the direction of the replication arc. All right. Because again, again, when we are making reference to direction, it is in reference to the original strand. One of these original strands are running three prime to five prime. The next one is running five prime to three prime. You tell me three prime to five prime, that is incorrect. Because this strand up here, three prime to five prime, that will not be re replicated continuously, as you will see in a bit. And it will not be replicated continuously. The one that is replicated continuously runs five prime to three prime. Good. But if you tell me three prime to five prime in the direction of the replication fork, you are referring to the exact same strand that is running five prime to three prime. Good. Don't forget that. So this is your leading strand. leading strand. So on your CAPE exam, they can ask you to explain continuous or discontinuous replication. If they ask for continuous replication, they are asking you for the leading strand only, not the entire process of replication. So the DNA replication, one strand is going to be continuous, and the next one is going to be discontinuous replication. The leading strand is replicated continuously because once the process starts, it does not stop. It goes to completion. Going back to the process here, once DNA polymerase starts, it will just continue behind is all the way out to the end and you will get your new strand. Right? So for the continuous replication, we need our RNA primer to start up the process. RNA primer is needed to show DNA polymerase 3 where it should come. All right? RNA polymer, DNA polymerase will come and it will add the appropriate bases. All right? Complementary base pairing. And it will do that until it reaches the end of the process. Good. And that's continuous repetition. Now, obviously, this is an RNA primer. And when we say primer, it's sequence of bases as well. So even though I'm putting objects here, RNA primers is sequence of bases, a short sequence. So which means that your RNA primer after DNA polymerase has completed, and in the nucleotides, we need to get rid of this primer. It will also be done in this continuous replication. So I'm going to explain it in discontinuous replication. So what do we need to remember for continuous replication? For one, is the strand that runs five prime to three prime, and that is your leading strand, right? Or you can say it is the strand that runs three prime to five prime in the direction of the replication form, right? So that is the strand that we start with. We put down a primer. Helicase is ahead, breaking the hydrogen bonds. DNA polymerase comes and add the complementary nucleotide, all right? 
I know this might get to confuse in saying three prime to five prime in the direction of the replication fork. I'm just going to show you that and then close the video here. I will do DNA, I will do discontinuous replication in a different recorded. All right, so let us just erase this portion of the, the diagram, right? Just clear everything from here. All right. So if DNA replication should start from this end, let us look at what would happen. All right. So that's the red part. All right. So I'm just doing a section of it. And then you have the blue part. Yes. And that part is unwind for the moment. Let's focus here. The red, we say that the red, that's the five prime. And it would end in three prime. This now is three prime. And this one is five prime. What I am explaining here is that this trend that runs three prime to five prime in the direction in the direction of the replication fork just run. DNA strand that runs three prime to five prime. And so the strand that runs three prime to five prime in the direction of the replication for is the leading strand. So in this case, our replication fork is going from left to right. So which strand is running three prime to five prime from left to right? This strand here, three prime to five prime. The reason why this strand will be your leading strand, if you remember we said DNA is made in a five prime to three prime, direction. So if, the, if this is your new DNA that will be made, so if your replication for open in this direction, then the strand that is going three prime to five prime in this direction, that is your leading strand. So it's actually safer to go with this the definition. You won't get it mixed up any at all. But the one that goes three prime to five prime in the direction of the replication fork. Because as you can see, this one is going five to three, which means that this is in the same direction as the new DNA that is being made. So this strand will turn out to be the lagging strand. Again, in the next video, you will see why it is the lagging strand. Right? By a leading strand, it runs three prime to five prime in the direction of the replication with the replication. All right, so all right, so to recap the process, let us just list the enzymes that were used and what they did. The top ice summaries. You had helicase, and chimase, and then we have DNA polymerase. All right, so topoisomerase, helicase, primase, and DNA polymerase. 
three. Oh, just to mention, when we opened up a strand of DNA, so it was coiled and we opened up a portion okay, to prevent the strands from reforming. So to prevent the bases from reforming the hydrogen bonds, we use single stranded binding proteins. So we have protein molecules that will bind to the bases and prevent the strands from reforming the double helix. Right? Okay, so that also happens. We would have our protein molecules that prevents the bases from forming hydrogen bonds. So that keeps the strands apart so that DNA polymerase can come on at the complementary bases. After helicase, we would have our single stranded, single stranded binding proteins. So you should be able to tell the rule of for K, helicase, single stranded binding proteins, primase, and DNA polymerase three. In the next video, we will look at the function of DNA polymerase one and a new enzyme ligase. All right, so I'm going to end this recording here.